about how in the process of him giving us a new heart, a heart of flesh yeah. instead of a heart of stone. And the uh, best analogy that I've been able to come up with, and Charlene and I have had a lot of fun with it, is is falling in love and getting married and and that that depth. I mean, this this most intimate, I would guess, of human relationships. This is our 50th anniversary year. Wow. Uh, yeah, 2022. So we're 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 I uh, uh, have done 50 years together, um, and and wow. it's been fun to. I mean, we've been talking and planning and and. and uh, but well, one of the fun things, it's also our 50th high school reunion because we got married the year we got out of high school. That's crazy. So there's all kinds of stuff flying around on Facebook and 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 Internet uh, with all of our all of our classmates as we're planning our 50th reunion. And and um, and so all that is stirred up in us. What was it like to be a senior in high school, graduating and planning to go to college and and getting then getting engaged, getting married, all that within that? that year and how our love for each other, how finding each other and just our love for each other trumped everything. <laughs> I mean, back, I mean, both of us gave up scholarships at, at college to get married. Um, I was, your, your vision for being with each other was greater than all this other stuff. Everything. And of course our parents are, are you know, <laughs> but, uh, um, um, but, and just the fact that our thinking about each other was constantly transferred into two and three hour phone conversations and for my heart to change, there has to be on some level, this passion, this mm -hmm. falling in love with Jesus that begins to trump everything else that begins to... Can you talk about the maturity of, uh, like your, your relationship with Charlene now? and your passion for her now. And cause like when I, I know what you're saying is true, but I think I, how do I, how do I, um, and I see new Christians and they're just, they're, they're incredibly passionate, but I know that some of the stuff they're saying is it's like, you just don't know yet. You just don't know, you know, you're, yeah. you're like, you're like young love that thinks, you know, you're, you're so idealistic and it's cute, but it's just like, you're, you'll find out. And how does that, what does a passionate love and, and intimacy with God look like? Uh, in comparison to a couple that's celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Well, I wish, I wish you guys could have followed Charlene around for the last three months with a video camera. Um, as she took care of you, her, her life stopped the same day my life did. I yeah. mean, um, because for a good two months of that, I couldn't get out of the recliner hardly without her helping me. Wow. Uh, and, and um, I mean, serious, serious help. Um, and it uncovered for us and particularly in her, just, it, it was like, it was like my sickness caused this new place of love for me and her to blossom. Dan, let's talk about river coming from the temple. And I'm going to read from chapter 47, just uh, a couple of verses here. It says, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. Now, this is a plumber's nightmare, except it's not in this case. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south side. So we got just a little bit of a water leak out of the temple here. It continues in verse three. <laughs> yep. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. The trickle is becoming a stream. He measured off another thousand cubits, led me through water that was knee deep. Another thousand, water up to the waist. Another thousand, it's a river I couldn't cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A yeah. river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? And then it goes on to describe this river flowing south, right out of the temple south. And, and who knows why it's that direction? Maybe it's just because that's the direction of, of the most brackish, uh, hellish water in the region, uh, yep. the place that nothing lives. And, and it goes into the Dead Sea Valley. And the whole valley is just transformed by this fresh water. And now there's trees, this water that no fish could live in is teeming with fish. And somehow the fresh overwhelms the dead, salty, brackish water. And it's a transformational picture. And it's all coming 
out of the temple and it starts with a little uh, trickle, like uh, there's a leaky faucet. What does this mean, Dan? Uh, it's a great picture that, that we as the church are participating in this, this, uh, this story of God from Genesis to Revelation 22 to get us back to the garden. Um, that that his, his heart for us and his heart for man is that one day we will be back in Eden um here here on the earth with the trees we right now as the church are participating in that restoration mm -hmm. we've got a piece of it right now and and the water that is bubbling up out of us in the holy spirit and the light that's in us is supposed to be bringing that kind of restoration to to our little sphere of influence to the best of our ability that god is redeeming in and and so um i get to participate in, in that now, which is pretty incredible that that's mm -hmm. the reality that we live in. And then I think um, um, beyond that is just every one of these pictures of whatever it's going to look like. I mean, if you go to Revelation or Daniel or, or Ezekiel or wherever and get this picture in the end times. Um, yeah, if, if you are a believer, um, it should fill you with nothing, but God's mm -hmm. got some really cool plans. In mm -hmm. And I like, to, I like to think of the dry, ugly, dead areas in our lives or around us. Oh. And God's, God's promise of, of, of restoration. And I love the trees and the major prophets. I love the forests that are being yep. formed in the desert. I love the water that's flowing. And, um, and this is the greatest one because it comes right out of the temple. Absolutely. Absolutely.